On the 12th day of Christmas, name is Christmas, 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 gave to, to me. To me. 12 presents hiding, 11 Salem slain, 10 queens are speaking, 9 Carlton's dancing, 18's a dating, 7 poops are swimming, 6 sherry's drinking, 5 punches to the face, 4 malicious rumors, 3 serenity nows, 2 grumpy old men, and a Xena warrior princess. Welcome to Namely 90s. The podcast that takes you back to the time before smartphones, Google, and Y2K. Join your hosts as they relive the pop culture that shaped a generation and the parts that many people wish they could forget. Listen in to the conversation about how the decade defined those who spent their childhood there and how it shaped them as adults. So... Turn down the grunge and dial up the internet. Let's get started. It's time for Namely 90s. That's right. You're listening to Namely 90s. I'm Andrew. That's Brandon, as usual. That's me. I and did you, it again. <laughs> you join us for the final installment of our holiday 12 Days of Christmas special. Happy Epis- New Year. Episode 12. Yeah, I know. The year that was the dumpster fire is finally it's over. 2021, baby. I know. Vaccines are everywhere. We got. We were able to go outside. <laughs> I just coughed on a bunch of people in a movie theater. It's great. <laughs> uh Anyway, uh, you can find us online at Namely90s.com or on Twitter at Namely90s with a 90s. And today, for our grand finale, we finally introduce the person I have referred to as the wife, much to her dismay on many occasions, (laughs) my wife, Kayla. Hi. me. Hello. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Yay. I'm so excited to talk to you in a formal situation. (laughs) Thanks for filling our last opening that was helpful well uh, you fill mine uh, so oh, oh, oh no that's <laughs> not where that was supposed to go okay well we have three uh, kids so it's not uh, like we're uh, shocking anyone it's here. happened at least three times we, are we is this now that the, is this now the howard stern show i feel like uh, it's gone that way. no uh, are, you, are you you could be our robin uh i guess that makes me the bubba Booey guy and now brandon's um, going to conduct a light interview <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, how how are you doing, Kayla? No. Well, it's another day in paradise. <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, we we are we're really happy to have you on because uh, Andrew's just referenced the wife like three or four times in the show so far, <laughs> and uh, you know it makes you sound like you're just some ephemeris person. Uh, we don't even know if you're my wife or his wife until just now. Um, well, wow. y- yeah, uh, it's 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 great to finally put a face to to, to a title. Your, yeah your title um <laughs> I, I even threw you as the wife on our little coachella poster that we did for all these specials but uh you didn't you didn't just fill a spot you uh because we needed you to fill a spot we wanted you to come on and we're very happy to to have you so you can <laughs> share some embarrassing stories about your husband <laughs> and hopefully none and about me you yeah nah. <laughs> yeah well uh i guess we'll start uh, I'm uh, we've been friends for a third of our lives at least at this point now um Mm -hmm. but uh how how did you how you how did you and Andrew meet well I don't know first do you want to plug your socials or anything oh sure so I'm Kayla um I'm a saint makeup artist that's f-e-i-n-t saint beauty um and so I've got a couple I've got a Facebook group. You can reach me on Instagram. My Facebook group is Curly Kayla's Beauty Boutique. Um, and then my my Instagram handle is Mrs. Rocco3. I'm the third one in that line. So Mrs. Rocco3, you can reach out to me if you have any questions. I did want to reach out and remind everybody because it's a new year. We've got New Year's resolutions, right? So oh. Uh, shop yeah. small when you can shop black when you can and shop local when you can. And there's a really awesome shop that I've been... Um, like browsing through periodically throughout this summer and fall um, called eco vibes and they're located in portland oregon i 
think Portland. I should just yeah, say Oregon. Portland. Ugh. And um, I've actually never been to Portland, but oh, there are really awesome shops. They've got really cool decor items and plants and pots and planters for your plants. Um, 2020 was a year of new skills for me. So taking care of plants. Is you you graduated from crazy cat lady to crazy plant lady yeah, in just a I few months. Yeah, I have my cats and three kids, and now I have like 50 plants to try to take care of, and I need I, pots for all those plants. I feel like you've gone backwards. I feel like you're supposed to start with a plant first, keep that <laughs> well, alive. Well, I've killed thing. every plant that I ever had before the age of 30, so I'm trying really hard to keep these ones alive. Some of them okay. are even having babies for me now. I'm like a plant grandma. You, you've, so. you've had, okay, I, you've had better luck with children and, and animals so far. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that's fair. Yeah, primarily in my life. So, uh, yeah, check out EcoVibes if you're looking for a really cool, trendy shop and you want to support um, a black couple and their business endeavors, especially as COVID-19 has shut a lot of businesses down, I think it's important to remember to support the small businesses. Yeah. Shop, shop small, shop local, shop black. Um, th- those are great, great things to live by and great, great idea for new year's resolutions. Um, I think I, know, I bought a shirt that said that at target. Uh, <laughs> no, just kidding. I know for Christmas, uh, the majority of my gifts came from uh, Slocally Made, which is uh, like a craft gift um, Christmas market here in San Luis Obispo. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. We don't Um, have one of those here. (laughs) In the middle of nowhere, they don't have have that? I feel like you always shopped local. You always bought, I remember every year when you'd go holiday shopping at the mall, Brandon, you would buy smoked salmon to send some oh. unnamed relative uh my, my auntie and uncle in um in hawaii because they they would always send me hawaiian stuff uh oh cool i yeah, was always like a to... stop at the made in washington store for brandon smoked oh, salmon. oh yeah smoked <laughs> salmon there, and apples and cotlets christmas uh, shopping this year i did a little bit of amazon i did a little bit of like nfl nhl shops and stuff but i was shopping you, off of christmas list and then when yeah. i could i threw in a lot of like local or small shops. And then my Christmas list is all local, small and black owned shops. Same here. Like my, my, I know I, I did a lot of Amazon shopping just because it's easier for yeah. um, our family members that, that can't get that, that shouldn't be out in this pandemic shopping uh, yeah. at stores. And uh, so I've done that. And for the little ones, uh, my, my niece and nephew, I definitely got some some stuff off of Amazon for them because I wanted to be sure it got there, um, mm-hmm. especially because I don't start my Christmas shopping late, as the both of you know. Um, so uh, I, I have to get some in-person shopping done to, to fill up. Uh, to fill out the rest of my my gift list. Um, but speaking of of. Uh, things and stuff and I don't have a good segue here um, you mentioned you're married to uh, co-host Andrew yeah mm-hmm. did you say the fat one I said that one <laughs> I was like, wow. we get into fat shaming later in this episode and yeah. it's not start oh, too early I thought, I, thought, I thought we were trying I thought we were trying to cross weave the 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 episode I'm sorry <laughs> yeah. um, the I mean I yeah if when you say been married that, almost almost 10 years yeah. 10 years in 2021. Um, that, I'm that's waiting impressive. for a new band. Uh, mm. th- which is traditionally the 10th anniversary band, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Andrew's uh, like, crap. Uh, Andrew's like, <laughs> when's her birthday again? <laughs> yeah. He has it's forgotten my birthday. Oh boy, here we go. He forgot <laughs> it. He forgot it two years ago. How hard is it? It's May 13th? <laughs> Six. Yours Damn is it. May tenth, Brandon. Mine I, is May sixth. I knew yours was in a w- within a week of mine, and there's so many people that I know that have birthdays okay. within the first two weeks of May. I apologize. He's also forgotten Mother's Day too. So oh, okay, that one's kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, Which is well, like the following week, so it's like well, a double whammy when I'm forgotten. <laughs> yeah, although although I feel like for us and especially for me, since my birthday falls on Mother's Day every four Three to years, seven, yeah, yeah um, it's it's really hard to to forget it. I wonder if like regular people that don't have birthdays right around then have to even realize that Mother's Day is stealing our birthday from mm-hmm. us. Well, and I share my oh. birthday with my grandma. Oh, oh so, I didn't know that. 
Yeah, my grandma Sandy, we, um, I was her first grandkid. And so it's super special. She was 52 when I was born. Oh. So the two of us were birthday buds. That's and a, I think that will be, you know, in a few years when we, well, I say a few, she's only in her 80s. So that's you know, a, whenever she's no longer with us, I think mm-hmm. that will be a double edged sword to have a that's, birthday. But. That's true. And you can't forget your birthdays on those days then. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Yikes. yeah, uh, you know, he told me to be the interviewer because he's afraid of just asking. I can interview those. myself. I could be, I could be like Ted Bundy in law. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just I'm trying to say, Andrew has, <laughs> Andrew has really over these last eleven episodes have really like shown in his like I know how to interview people when I uh, have uh, <laughs> little to no prep. Uh, Did done, he use man. his work boy? He has a work boy. I um, don't think do I. I no, yeah. I have a podcasting voice and a work voice. The podcasting voice differs based on how much fast voice. food I've eaten before I've done the podcast. He has that uh, nice lethargic. Then he has a few separate voices for me. I get I get the special secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I've heard them. Yeah, uh, that, those are, to, that's for our Patreon users. Yeah, uh, our Patreon. Uh, you can join our non-existent Patreon and uh, join us while we play Rocket League with each other. Um, yeah. yeah. That's another thing. We all play Rocket League almost nightly. Almost <laughs> nightly. It's pretty fun. I mean, it's, it's really... It's been a yeah, it's been a good thing, especially during um COVID, because it it's like it's like actually being able to hang out with you guys in a bar. And I wonder yeah. why haven't we been doing this for Well, now? well here's the thing. First I concealed the podcast from you yeah, yes. for six months, which oh, yeah. is we should which tell is, that story, absolutely. Well well, that's the story. I concealed the podcast from her for six months. Oh. But then After I when had she a went, baby. <laughs> when she went on vacation, she went on vacation to her parents, and I also secretly bought a PlayStation Four, which sort of like the podcast led to Brandon and I talking more, and then it led to Rocket League, and now here we are. I, I think the, that's the funniest part. Like, I, I think it was last night, and I'm like, "Wait, Lucas is isn't a year yet?" Because <laughs> yeah. I, for some reason, I thought he. Uh, sorry, did, uh, yeah, uh, I was like. I thought yeah, he was at least right. a year old because I thought we, I thought we started after like much, much mm-hmm. after. Um, but this weird has been, this year has been weird or it this has. weird has been year, uh, either or, but now it's a new year and with new things, Finally. but I thought we should no also more talk babies. about no yeah. more, ba- hopefully no more babies in 21. Um, uh, it's a friend's reference, but divorce. <laughs> We should uh, we should talk about some holiday memories. Uh, yeah. moving, moving on to how Kayla and me, because that's pretty much the only time that we've ever been able to hang out for the most part. Yeah. Um, I was uh, thinking we hung out last fall. I was trying to think about that today. We came we down. We went to California. California. Th- that was yeah. the other, that was the other thing why I thought it it had been over a year since he's been born because you were pregnant on that trip, mm-hmm. and uh, so you couldn't go tasting, which was unfortunate. And mm-hmm. um, it, and I rented a mid life crisis car yep. oh it was so fun and i bought my switch and you bought your nintendo switch that which you now play rocket league on with us well yeah that i'm gonna gift that i'm gonna gift the kids for christmas i'm gonna re-gift that and they've been gifted already bought myself a pink one <laughs> which is more cute um yeah so that's that was the other reason why i was like wait he's not a year yet because i, I thought that happened two years ago at least um it feels like it yeah, I know. I, time has no more no meaning, especially when you're recording uh, a New Year's Day episode like weeks in advance. <laughs> yeah. uh, my brain is completely fried. Um, but yeah, you know the the only the majority of times that we got to hang out is when um, I would be home from college for like Christmas and uh, visiting during the summer, and um, I, it's it's hard because like I don't get to see you guys as often but um, uh, like we've been saying Rocket League has really been good for our our antisocial lives. No I do think COVID has shown people that you don't actually need to be in the same room to to hang out with people anymore and it's like uh, you know I almost made it more accessible in a way. I mean it would be cool to be in the same room but you know we can still hang out. Yeah. Yeah. And then we could do things like this where we get to see you see each other yeah. and do like the Brady Bunch look. Uh, sorry. Yeah. That's for our visual Hi, component on our uh, podcast. You can find it at naming90s.com slash YouTube. 
Um, That's with a nine zero F. <laughs> with a nine zero. Actually, the website has both uh, ninety right. nine zero S both. and I know. Yeah. I caught up to that episode. That's YouTube.com with a nine zero S. Oh yeah. <laughs> not not only not only is uh, she an amazing wife for putting up with her husband hiding this podcast for six months from her. Uh, she's steadily been getting through the back catalog. She didn't just don't jump forward to whatever episode we're on. She's working our way. The beginning. I yeah. haven't seen any of the Christmas episodes yet, so I'm no. super excited. Uh, those started on the 21st of mm. January. Uh, December. December. January 21st. So, 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 no, December 21st. <laughs> there it is. Oh, yes. I said January, didn't I? See? <laughs> Time has no meaning. Um, but no meaning. The, I, I think... We, I, I, I wanted you to come on specifically for a friends episode. Um, yes, you, you had suggested the the. I don't remember what holiday episode armadillo. Title. The, har- yeah, holiday armadillo. the holiday armadillo. The holiday armadillo. That's a classic, that, but I didn't realize it's not in the nineties. Yeah, it, it's just on the other side of the Y two K millennium. Whereas the episode we watched um, was. The one with the routine, routine, season six, episode 10, which is the 1999 New Year's Christmas episode. Um, mm-hmm. But let's talk first about friends. We're all friends. Well, you guys are married, but uh, <laughs> I consider you both friends. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's also a great show, which I remember watching even as a kid. Didn't get half the jokes, um, but it, it was a... a it was one of the sitcom, the adult sitcoms I got to watch uh, with my parents. And um, I, the last time I had a good rewatch of it was when it dropped on Netflix like four years ago, New Year's Day, five years ago. So um, what about what about you two? I feel like there's some there's some backstory with friends there. I actually never watched it as a kid, not until high school. I have a friend named Andrea who um, her family had all of the seasons box sets. And so I would drive over to her house and have to borrow friends and drive home with a box (laughs) for the (laughs) next season. And our family would binge watch it downstairs and we had never watched it. Maybe my parents caught an episode or two on TV, but we didn't have TV when I was growing up. And so we all got to experience it together for the first time. And we laughed so hard. The first time you watch Friends, there's nothing like it because those jokes are perfect. And a lot of the episodes that are on the DVDs and then in like the collector set, they mm. are the extended the extended uh, versions. And so nice. there's a lot of jokes that I know that aren't in the streaming <clears throat> services. Right, because they only have me. the broadcast version. Mm-hmm. And it kills me because I know that they're there. So it's like I need to go get, I need to, well, I we've given the box that away. I think my uncle has it now, but. Um, it was definitely a big part of when we were dating, though. Yeah. You know, we we'd go to her house and watch it. And I remember I had watched some friends. It was on, you know, in my house when I was younger, but I never like watched it, watched it. And uh, the uh, there are like certain episodes where I, I like I I didn't like pissed my pants watching this one. The teeth, Ross with teeth. Ross with the teeth. Ross and then the, the dirty pants. The dirty girl episode. The dirty girl the with the I, <laughs> I was laughing so hard. I like had to. They had to stop the show, and I had to like take a few minutes. <laughs> They're all the Ross episodes that I just died. They're so funny. Uh, uh, yeah, um, I guess I forgot to. Me- I, I've mentioned this on a previous episode of Namely Nineties, but I had the. I got my mom to buy the cassette tape of the Rembrandt single. I'll be there for you. <laughs> and we'd listen to that in the car uh, a lot right. when we'd go out driving. I think right. it probably drove her insane. Um, <laughs> but I, my, um, I, I would always get that one line wrong, which is like, I've been there before uh, during this is the line, but I always just heard like a bad bear and four. I, I just like, I, <laughs> You know, when you're a kid and you don't have the right. diction and understanding. Kid or of, a, a, an adult who's 30 and doesn't know lyrics to songs. That's me. fair. Uh, <laughs> I mean, with the advent of the internet uh, being accessible to me, I definitely went more on like lyric sites because CDs, CD inserts, and I guess CDs don't exist anymore, stopped having the lyrics on the, on the inside. Mm-hmm. Very hard for us uh, people that, that just don't understand the lyrics or well yeah um, music needs to come with subtitles right uh 
obviously I, things I remember you guys mentioned your favorite episodes I I remember we were on a break very well oh yeah um how do you guys feel about that where do you where do you land that's like a big that's a big friends question for fans. I'm with Ross personally but yeah yeah I'm time with I'm with Ross I think they were on a break Kayla <laughs> I mean, it maybe if they were on in a, a long break, but like that day, just go out and like yeah, sing was... some copy girl, like, uh, yeah. And she didn't, like, for me, didn't have the right break. look. I'm just going to go, but... I'm just going to go, you know, bang wow. some dude that I've just met. Like that. I don't know. Yeah. I'd have it, to warm it, up. It, I'd have to be an extended feels, break. Yeah. It feels premeditated is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I would say by the letter of the law, they were on a break, but yeah, yeah I think the, the, the spirit of it is a little bit suspect uh, like that, that day. Yeah. I, I'm with you. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I also, I was, I was team Ross as well on that, even though, uh, Caleb makes very good points. Um, but also, you know, this is the series that uh, that really ingrained that toxic relationship of Ross and Rachel and will they won't meet won't they it's actually a, like there are there are so many discussions out there about how terrible of a relationship that is mm-hmm. how it just like when you look back at it, it's not cringeworthy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. although i still prefer that pairing to rachel and joey oh yeah Yeah, well yeah Uh, yeah people the 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 things that i've read are like ross and rachel is toxic they should have been with or she should have been with joey because she yeah because joey wasn't a misogynistic womanizer yeah but the the idea was she made him better is is their point one of andrew's uh one of our first married halloween's Andrew and I were Chandler and Janice. Oh yeah. I, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Brandon's going to dig that picture out. That well, that's, one. that's why, that's what I went fishing for, uh, <laughs> at the beginning of this. Um, yeah, we were Chandler and Janice. Although oh. I have always been, uh, well, you know, people compare you to classic characters mm. and people Rachel. have always, no, people have <laughs> always compared me to Phoebe. I can, I can, yeah. always. I have more I of the neurotic EB. tendencies of EB. Monica. Of Monica, yeah. BB. That episode was last night while we were in bed. Why does she keep making that noise? <laughs> BB. <laughs> yeah, but as far as keeping house, she's more of a Monica. <laughs> yeah. No uh, crummies in the bed. When it comes to my dancing skills, I'm more of a BB. <laughs> um, they don't know. We know they know we know. The. That's a good one. Um, the the Phoebe and uh, sorry, I did find my list of favorite episodes. I I really enjoyed the Phoebe and Ross backstory episode where she you was the him? one. That, yeah, she mugged him as a kid. Yeah, um, good. and then I like a lot of the flashback episodes where they unfortunately put um, Monica in a fat suit. Well, oh, they put Courtney yeah. Cox in a fat suit. It's uh, one of those shows that isn't aging well, but. Yeah. But it's it's nothing from the '90s is really. No. Yeah. I uh, think if we, if I had to compare Andrew and I as a couple, we'd probably be a Phoebe and Mike. I think that would be a pretty fair. Like I'm kind of quirky, yeah. and he also has some quirks. Like he plays a pretty good straight, but he can also be a weirdo. But like one of our one of our favorite episodes is when uh, Phoebe. Phoebe meets meet Mike's Mike's parents. parents. (laughs) (laughs) Phoebe. It's pretty good. (laughs) See, I, I I would, I, I, I personally see you as a Chandler and Monica, honestly. Uh, There's elements of both. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, And since you spend more time with them throughout the series. Um, uh, And then my final early favorite one would be the one with the quiz show bet over the apartment. Yeah. Channel. Oh, bamboozled. Yeah, no, bamboo. this is no, 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 no. that's, that's uh, a different episode. The, the trans sponsor, yeah. Uh, oh, the Ch- Jeopardy one, Ch- the Ch- 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 Bong was Ch- a Ch- 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 Bong. Bong. Bong, yeah. <laughs> Ms. Ms. Chandler Bong, Ms. Chandler Bong. Uh, so we all know the fun fact that they started at uh 22.5 dollars per and episode, ended up at like a million per episode. Yes, and that's seasons. per per cast member. Yeah, that's in the crazy. last two seasons, they got one million per episode. Uh, but they did draw in like twenty two point 
four million viewers. That's immense. That's a huge amount of and viewers. I think it's one of the first. Oh, sorry about my camera. I think it's one of the first shows that had a gay couple. Right? They had a lesbian couple, Carol and oh, Susan. El- Ellen was on. Ellen was on, but she wasn't part of a couple, was she? I don't I, think she was out back then. She yeah, was. That was the we'll entire the premise. Timeline. That was the premise of oh, the entire it? show. Oh. Was it? But as far as like a, a couple, I guess. And maybe? they had their their well, wedding. I mean, or I don't. I don't. Th- yeah. Oh, you're saying like a married. Uh, yeah. Gay yeah. Gay yeah. yeah I, I don't remember that. No. And that uh, was in season one. I mean, that's like 1994. Rent. That's yeah. That would be prior to Ellen. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I was Ro- Roseanne's sister. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, Roseanne. Yeah. It's, I can't. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with her for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Just start Fun. spewing racial slurs as oh. you would. Like, okay. Uh, that's, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, well, <laughs> but she's on Prozac. It's fine. Um, I think I've, I've sufficiently registered my uh, dis- dislike of Roseanne. Yes. At this point. <laughs> to be fair, the last time you brought it up, I thought you were talking about Rosie O'Donnell. Um, <laughs> you know, I can see how you get them confused. Honestly, starts with an RO. Uh, popular in the early nineties. Um, yeah. So, any other thoughts on Friends before we dive into this episode? None here. Okay. I'm actually. I know this is a hot topic. I know a lot of people have been gunning for like a Friends reboot. I don't want one. You don't want one. I don't like a reunion, one. like I, retrospective show, maybe. But they not are a, doing they are doing that on HBO. Not Max. a sh- not not trying to actually make new episodes, like just yeah. like a proper reboot. Like I like to see them together and stuff, but I don't know. I you, you're fine with how Joey went for two seasons because they liked it in the UK for some terrible reason. Yeah. Uh, I'm like what I, happened yeah, to Matthew Perry? Saw. Why does he look that way? I don't know. It's weird. He aged and he did a lot of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that? Uh, also, um, now that I, it, it just jumped into my head. Episodes uh, is a very good uh, we TV enjoyed series. It. Not clean at all, but we enjoyed a few, like maybe a season. We didn't of watch the whole thing, but it was pretty entertaining. It's yeah. it's it's like 20 episodes over two series. I know. We never, we I don't think we ever got to the finished. end of it though. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, it's on something. I know it's on one of the streaming services you guys have, um, but I guess it's hard to to watch new stuff uh, with three young children running about uh, and all the CSI you guys watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, we're, we're big into the CSI. So, yeah, let's talk about the one with the routine. Who remembered this one? Well, of me, course. Of course. I, yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, I did as well. Um, this guy. So... Yeah. Uh, does someone want to give a summary of the episode? Because we've been so bad about actually doing that. <laughs> you're going to love listening to these 12 specials, Kayla. We're going to be like just talking about random jokes and you're going to be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess there's a few storylines, but the, the main one is that like Joey's roommate, who he's romantically interested in, invites him to Dick Clark's New Year's Rock and Eve to be a dancer because she got invited. And then Ross and Monica have always wanted to be on that show. Like they're super nerds for it. So they get invited as well. And their goal is to get on camera, to get on TV. Um, so at the end of the episode, they they go back to their routine that they had done in the talent show in the eighth grade and try to use that to get on camera. Um, and then there's also like a, a, a C story where well, the B story, I guess, where um, Chandler, Phoebe and Rachel are trying to find all the gifts that Monica bought. And so they're like searching the apartment to find them. Uh, yeah, that uh, might be the C story. That's technically the C story. Um, can I just point out that Monica kept saying the eighth grade talent show and Ross kept saying the eighth grade talent show? No, but they're they said not the, the same. They said the middle school, the middle school routine, middle school. I didn't they say eighth grade at one point? Eighth grade was said. I know, at some I, point. I know they said no. Rachel says Rachel, it. Re- Rachel I think says Rachel it at refers the end. it. Okay, that but, makes more sense. Uh, she would, she would think it from her perspective. Yeah, yeah. But that means Ross, Ross was in a eighth grade, ninth grade, or eighth grade. Yeah, I don't know. You know what I appreciated about this was um, one of the shows we watched, the nine hundred two one zero, like 
the the people who are supposed to be brother and sister had like this really awkward sexual chemistry, which was kind of grossing us out. But like Ross and Rachel have a very like sibling Ross and Monica relation. Yes, yeah, sorry, Ross and Monica. Sorry, Ross and Monica. Everyone says Ross and Rachel grinding on each other. Yeah, Ross and Monica. Like it just seems like a very like whole sibling relationship. It's not yes. creepy. Oh, that was yeah. Gross. Shannon like Doherty and Jason Priestley kind of had. Uh, Ugh. those vibes Yikes. going on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I watched this a week ago, so I don't remember what my first point was about, but I think it has something to do with Chandler or Ross saying something boring. Well, yeah. Chandler's like, these lights are, are really small. Back in my day, we had really big lights. Ah, that's like, that's a good story. Grandpa. That's me. I, I would be the person to tell that story. Yeah. My, my aunt likes those big Nordstrom stuff sized all of the other reindeer bulbs that they sold in the nineties. That's what I've got. I mean, they're not, that was like the, the best the year at Nordstrom walking through, all, walking through the mall. And it was all of the other reindeer hung everywhere. That was such like, I, that's I never, pretty nostalgic for me. I never watched it, but I, I, I do vividly remember that, that Christmas <laughs> mm-hmm. at Nordstrom's though. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have to say, I didn't realize, I think the voice of Olive was Drew Barrymore. I don't think I ever watched it. Oh, I didn't watch it either. Um, I just remember shopping at Nordstrom. I thought the art <laughs> style was a little creepy, to be honest. The the dead black eyes on on Olive just follow you everywhere as you go up oh. the escalator. And it's the beginning of a horror movie. Because <laughs> of the escalator. I, uh, the beginning of the episode, <laughs> they're decorating the Christmas tree. That's what And they're like, wow, Monica's letting other people decorate the Christmas tree? <laughs> Yep. And then uh, she spins it. Yeah. Then she spins it. That's something that has been passed down to me. It's in my blood. We don't let other people decorate our Christmas tree. My mm-hmm. mom and I decorate our own trees and nobody it touches it. It looks beautiful. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I'm glad because I don't want to touch it. <laughs> I have to fix it a lot because the cats come up and they bug it. But yeah, God, as a kid, yeah. we had our own, we had a separate Christmas tree that was kept downstairs out of sight, out of mind. And we were allowed to decorate that one however we chose. Mm-hmm. And, and you could just attack it with all the or, random mm-hmm. discard ornaments. Mm-hmm. That you yeah, my want. mom has always had a themed tree, and so I do too. Uh, I have in my notes. I miss long intros with poppy intro songs because I I very much love that Rembrandt's "I'll Be There for You." We've said that a few times, Andrew and I have. I agree, and this is one of the ones that fits my criteria for like candid shots of the actors, but not with them looking at the camera because then it gets cheesy. But they st- they do stare at the camera, so. Uh, I know what Andrew means. He means that like while they're just like doing something, they might be looking at the camera, but they're just like dancing or something. But it's from the actual show. It's not like this yes, shot specifically the, the one, for the, the one intro. where they danced in the fountain. Okay, that was different. That's the oh, intro. Yeah. Okay, but uh, it's interspersed with the candid did shots. You ever, did you ever catch that as? seasons have progressed obviously the intro has changed and they use different clips but sometimes they time clips to like i don't know the clap or uh like they do like they do a bunch of hugs or a bunch of kisses or Mm -hmm. like a bunch you know i don't know if andrew's ever noticed that the clips have changed not really i mean the clips (laughs) change but also how many claps are there in the song four yeah there's four uh, per per clap session. Yeah, people always think there's either like five or so they always do way too many. There's four. Uh, I I did have yeah, to like s- sit there. And no one told you like it was gonna be this way. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, it sounds like eight because of the the fast pace. Mm-hmm. It's uh. That's a bit, it's, of, bit of trivia for ya. Yeah, it's it's what, what one sixteenth note or. Four sixteenth notes. I don't know. Um, I love. I love the fact that the um, Joey's roommate refers to it as like New Year's Dick and Rock and Eve or something like Dickie, that. Yeah, she's like Dicky Rock and Dick and Eve or something like that. She, <laughs> yeah. she and then they, they correct her and she's like, "Yeah, that's what I said." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. she's a famous uh, supermodel. I can't remember what her name is. She's a famous supermodel. Yeah, um, I I don't remember like she's she was like one of the top Victoria's Secret models at the time. Well, who is she? I can't remember her name. Uh, what was her name in the show? It's Janine. Janine. As soon as you say, um, I'm gonna kick myself that I've forgotten it. But uh, like, it's not Giselle. It's no. um, uh, begins with an E. L. 
Mm, Al McPherson. Al McPherson. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. She said she regrets her for role in Friends. Hey, whatever. Because she didn't mean. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. Uh, you know, she she went on to to do much more, I guess. Because it was really. a lot of pressure. Well, then d- why did she do it? Okay, whatever. I don't know. Not that much pressure. It's friends. She wasn't Batman and Robin, which was the first of the bat nipple Batmans. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, interesting. I uh, didn't know that she hated it so much. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Like, get over it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's so hard being a guest star on a massively popular show. Like, what's your problem? Yeah. Right, whatever. Uh, and that was like mid-series, too. Uh, fat shaming immediately following. <laughs> I forget the exact context. Uh, Chandler, Monica fangirls about being in the uh, New Year's Eve show. And he goes, oh, you're just a fat girl or like a a fat girl inside or the fat yeah. girl yeah, so you, or something like that. Oh my gosh. It's so bad. Yeah. And um, I, I thought it was nice to get an update on everyone's relationship status and roommates right at the meeting there. Cause yeah. I, I jumping back in the middle, I, I didn't know what was going on. I mean, I knew what was going on when I would see someone enter, but I'm just like, who's married? Who's not? Who's with Ross? Who's with Rachel? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then Joey develops a plan to kiss a woman without consent. <laughs> How appropriate for the 90s. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Ross shares a story about kissing Rachel without consent and lying about it because he wanted some chapstick. <laughs> It was a dry day, which is a move Andrew's used on his wife many of times. Uh, I've used it on Andrew. She uh, gets it for me. Thank you. I moist. I moisturize my lips he's quite taken, often. In he's fact, taken my lip gloss enough for me to where I've given him his own gloss. I, I've go. literally been in the car with the wand of lip gloss, like putting my lip gloss mm-hmm. on as I'm driving <laughs> the wand uh, so, guys. So uh. at nighttime, he has his own chapstick and I will roll over and kiss him and take all the chapstick off. I nice. carry my own special chapstick now. Uh, do you have a name for it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, I thought it was kind of sobering to see the Twin Towers in an establishing shot. Um, yeah. It's been a- yeah, they stopped doing that after after 9-11. Yeah. Did they, did they keep it in... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, like it's in, in, the re- in the no, yeah. I mean in the, in, in the, the like reruns. indication, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. they kept it. Yeah, they That's didn't good. use old clips from when they were still there. <laughs> like, that would have been a little awkward. Yeah, they uh. stopped. They stopped doing the skyline so much when they uh, mm. like after two thousand what two thousand one two thousand one. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, they they always do the skyline. Like we know it's in Los Angeles. We don't need to keep showing the skyline. Like we get it. It's in New York or Seattle. You know, Kayla told us what uh, character friends character she is. Um, I'm waiting for Andrew to catch up on notes here. Um, Chandler, obviously, (laughs) Uh, I aspire to be as funny as Chandler. Frankly, I'm so sorry, Kayla. Mine is the fat shaming. That's that's a better thing to strive for. Um, I I liked the note. So this is the C story where the the girls are trying to find Monica's gifts. I like how they find the that old shoe in a bag, and the the note the note had a PS on it that said PS Chandler. I knew they'd break you. Um, see, Monica. that's a move I could see her doing, and me being as Chandler, like being oh god. <laughs> She knows me too well. Yeah. Um, and then Chandler's gifts. They find Chandler's gifts in a closet. And they're just <laughs> all <my> junk. <laughs> <laughs> These gifts are awful. Oh, well, those are the ones I got you. Oh, well, then they're great. I don't know. Like, Thanks, Chandler. It's such, a, it's, it's such a cheap, like, trite joke. But yet I laughed at it. Like, I think mm-hmm. that's what makes the show is the fact that they can make a joke that is so obvious, but yet it still makes you laugh. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's spe- kind of amazing. Speaking of laughing, um, this this is something that when I heard it for the first time, I was like, you just wrinkled my brain. But um, so Rachel laughs at Phoebe's jokes, but no one laughs at Chandler's jokes. <laughs> like 
he uh, on a, 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 an occasional episode he may get like a single chuckle but no no one laughs at Chandler's jokes I it, think it's because they're over like they're over it like that was my old coworkers. they didn't really laugh at my jokes anymore but whenever a new person started I'd make my same jokes and they would laugh and it would always reinforce it, the behavior but if so- <laughs> But it's something genuinely funny. Like Ka- Kayla and I have known you for the same for over the same length that the series of friends have has existed. Uh, True. We still laugh at things that are actually funny from time to time. So True. We just laugh at Andrew. Okay. No, I say funny stuff occasionally. Yeah. I'm not saying things that are possibly going to get me canceled. And we and we own up to it. We we actually laugh at it. It's, um, it's sweet. I'll laugh. Uh, I'll be laughing quietly in another room and Andrew will hear me and he's like, are you laughing at what I just said? Did you I'm laugh? Like, yes. <laughs> but I don't no. want to let you know. I do it quiet. I always tell people like, don't give them the satisfaction of laughing. <laughs> I could be entertaining. Like so, I, I do feel like I've made some good jokes and our guests have genuinely laughed at them. So do you think that's, that's the, uh, you're just, just like, um, the friends and Chandler, they're trying to not reinforce, uh, his constant joke making. Could be by laughing. Hmm. One time I gave Andrew a quota and I was like, you are only allowed five jokes a day. <laughs> So you so wisely, you think about if it's worth using one of your jokes. It only lasted for a short while that he would do that. But uh, is it was it honor system based, or did he have to have like physical pieces of paper to turn in? <laughs> that might have kept it going longer. <laughs> Maybe a punch card. Uh, but I will yeah, say this show card. definitely went went hard at the laugh track too. Though. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> like, it, was a, it was a classic '90s sitcom. There, there was. There was laugh track. It was unfortunate. And they had a live uh, audience, though. Did they use that much laugh track? Oh, I, I think it was a live audience. It, it still live sounds audience. laugh tracky. It's, they yeah, had a lot but, of live audience. I mean, but, maybe but, some. But they tell you when to uh, cheer and applaud. That's part of yeah. the live it's, audience. You have to well, like, yeah. to, to Brandon's next point, the tall guy at the dancing thing is a douche. And there was like, when he said that he had a wife, there was like quiet murmuring from the studio audience, mm-hmm. you know? I just <laughs> had to say, murmur. I kind of identify with that chick in the green getup. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. a crazy dancing. He just like he just like sets she her on a like, pole and she starts like <laughs> going crazy on it. She uh she's like, mellow. Yeah, she's real mellow. That might be me. <laughs> if I had to be somebody in this episode. <laughs> and her nose. That's me. <laughs> uh oh, so um so, uh, he, blah, 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 blah. Andrew oh, skipped yeah. over um, my previous point. Uh, Ross and Monica cringe uh, moments because they start doing the route. I think they start doing the routine, or they're like just jumping in front of the guy trying to point at yeah. people to go up on the podium, and or yeah, I, I don't remember exactly what triggered it. Um, but then moving forward, I wrote it concerns me that there was an honorable an honorable mention in the brother and sister dance category. So one, there was a brother and sister dance category <laughs> and, and two, two there were enough people competing that they were they were able to give a winner and an honorable you, mention. you got you picked it up you picked it up yeah um yeah y- yeah that they didn't look i didn't see another brother and sister couple out there i didn't think um no i think they meant that was the talent show in the eighth grade oh right that's what it was from yeah yes. yeah but still even more still. concerning even more <laughs> yeah. concerning yeah. um i didn't think the routine was that terrible I, I think it was pretty good yeah <laughs> yeah uh, and the fact that they like had practiced it over the the last decades you know like, by like did you practice routine no yes <laughs> that was pretty awesome yeah um Let's see. So this this the new year in this episode is uh, New Year's Eve, nineteen ninety nine, which is Y two K. I recall everyone kind of being like panicky. I mean, not like my parents were like whatever, but I assume they're just doing that because I was a small child and could easily be frightened by things. I, I, um, I think part of the issue is they didn't really know that much about computers back then. <laughs> like right, it just it wasn't a big deal, and I don't know why everyone made it such a big deal. But computers like personal computers and computers being like responsible for everything, the banking industry, utility, you know, thing. Like, I just think they didn't know what to do with that, but now it's just such a backbone of our 
our culture and our society that I just don't think it'd be as big of a deal if it happened now. Uh, it wasn't a big deal when it happened. <laughs> well, I know, but yeah. everyone was making it a big deal. There were all these people who like, did I did Y2K compliance and all this stuff. And it's like, oh my gosh, how old are you? Well, Y2K compliance, all you were doing was changing the, the year to a uh, forge number f- from a two digit number. So Which is what yeah. we had to do when we started writing out dates this year. We were filling out hospital paperwork and they said you need to write out 2020 when you sign things out because it's easy for people to 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 backdate to Mm forge your your document. Yeah, I started doing that too on all my checks. Here we are, two decades later, implementing the same uh, protocols. Mm -hmm. Um, I... Well, I, I don't know why I have this written down. Raiders of the Lost Ark reference. Don't look directly at them. Oh, it was oh, the, the presents. Yeah. yeah. So they, they found look the presents. Yeah. I thought that was clever. Harrison Ford, Raiders of Lights. This is Brandon on day 12 of the new <laughs> specials. Out of sight, out of mind, out of everything, and out of words. With a 90S. With a 90S. <laughs> Coats were huge in the 90s with the 90S, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like did everyone have just oversized coats i don't remember having an oversized coat i i had a large coat are you talking about like the puffy coat no like just like the like oh, suit like jackets Eddie Bauer. yeah oh, like su- suit about, jacket like, suit jackets were big uh i mean i guess they live in new york so they they had more like yeah. bigger did coats you to have, have a suit i mean you were like ages one through nine Oh, that's a very dapper five-year-old. I feel uh, like Brandon is the type of kid that would have had like a, a child's tuxedo or suit for special occasions. Uh, yeah, I, I think my third grade photo, <laughs> if I could find that, is they forced me to wear a suit to picture day. Um, oh, no. Yeah. I wore a bucket hat in one of my, like my fourth grade photo. My I will tell you, speaking of, oh, sorry, speaking of jackets, though, mm-hmm. my parents back in the 90s, they used to like get us a babysitter and they'd go out on the town and they would they would go out in their like awesome like brown you know when when leather is like matte you know it's like that matte finish mm-hmm. it, they had these like brown matte finish leather coats that they were out to the bar and then when they came home they had to hang them in the garage <laughs> and they I were just like the out. most dated a horrible thing ever <laughs> my parents had the eddie bauer jacket they still mm, have yeah. them they're hanging eddie, downstairs eddie bauer is big my mom um, actually used to work at eddie bauer yeah she worked at the that. call center. That was like I was in second grade and she worked at the call center. And so she would be up and out of the house by like three or four. And my dad would have to drop me off at a friend's house in the morning so they could take me to school. Mm. Don't forget in the 90s when Ford had an Eddie Bauer trim level for their like SUVs and pickup oh, yeah. trucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they were uh, just like tan and, and drab green. Yep. I think that carried over to the 2000s. Um, so let's see. Uh, they do actually mention Y2K at one point, but they're just like, why 2K? Um, and then uh, then we get to Joey making out with Al McPherson. Uh, it's awkward. Hard. All of that is awkward. There was a lot of tongue in that. Yeah. Uh, not that I was watching closely. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the next line after that I wrote, I said, bang, bang. Bangity bang, I said a bang, bang, bangity bang. bang. <laughs> uh, that's a How I Met Your Mother reference. I understand. Uh, quick cut. Uh, we we had to take a quick break to get the wee baby Lucas on calm down. Um, but we were just talking about the end of the episode where Joey and Elle McPherson's character hooked up. And yeah. uh, my final thought uh, of this was all these songs are horrible in this episode. Yes, although Smash Mouth, one of Kayla's favorite bands, is the first song that they play at that dance. Was it, or was uh, it some sh- sh- uh, bad knockoff? It, it was a Smash Mouth song. Oh, I do love Smash Mouth a lot. Uh, Smash Mouth, Bare Naked Ladies. Oh yeah, Nickelback. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh Nickelback. no, I like Nickelback. I, that's why I was naming them. Uh, oh, and then they end on another fat joke right at the very Perfect. end. Perfect. Uh, That's appropriate. Fantastic. I really appreciate that uh, Janine's character is very tall. Yeah, and they, yes. they put her with they put her with Joey, who is not very tall. As he's a, the shortest friend, is mm-hmm. he not? Being a tall person myself, I appreciate that coupling. Yes, being a tall person myself, it's nice to see a tall person yeah. on screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
you forget that women can be tall sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> any, any final thoughts on this episode? <laughs> I mean, in the catalog of friends episodes, yeah, it's not the best one, but it's, it's good. I mean, I, I don't dislike really any friends episode. Ooh, except any with Phoebe's brother. Oh, Frank yeah. He's Frank. Oh, Frank. I mean, it's Frank. Oh, really? Why? Or Frank, not Frank Jr. Frank Jr. I guess he's just yeah. the actor that plays him is just insufferable. I just, I, I can't. Uh, I, okay. And then for some reason, he's with the mom from that 70s show is like his love interest. I yeah, that's pretty funny. And that 70s show started in the late 90s, too. So she she hopped over pretty quickly. And of course, I loved it when uh, George Clooney and Noah Wiley, while well, I don't know how to say that, whatever, John Carter and um, Doug Ross guest starred on that show. It's like one of the first few seasons. Yeah, yeah I, it's around the, the um, Thanksgiving episode with all the guest spots, isn't it? Could be. Uh, the other one with Brad Pitt. Yeah, uh, yeah. The Brad Pitt one is good. That's another think, show. Yeah, a lot, I think like uh, guest stars. Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt were married when they did that episode. Oh yeah, oh, that makes some sense. yeah, that's that's pretty funny. Yeah. Then uh, very meta jokes there, since he was hating on Rachel the entire time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, uh, I guess that's it for this holiday edition of Name We 90s. Thank you to the wife, Kayla, for coming on. <laughs> Kayla, Anytime. can you let our listeners know where to find you and I'm, any other things? Well, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Facebook, you can find me in my beauty group, Curly Kayla's Beauty Boutique. And on Instagram, I am Mrs. Rocco3. It's just All right. me and the crazies. And we'll throw yeah. all that down below to, if you want to check her out and uh, the businesses she was plugging in the beginning. Um, and as always, you can find us on Twitter at namely 90s with a 90s or find our personal <laughs> accounts at B. Schwinney and at namely Andrew and wish us a merry, happy new year. Happy you new can year. also contact us through our website, namely 90s.com. Please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, Smelly Cat, Deezer, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, <laughs> and wherever you get your podcasts at. I'm Brandon. That that's Andrew. Thank you one final time to the mother of Andrew's kids, <laughs> Kayla, for coming on. And we will catch you on Monday, January 4th for a regular episode of I almost said Rewind, Ooh. namely 90s. Rewind. Happy New Year. Rewind. <laughs> Happy, New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Welcome to the year 2000. Uh, Copyright strike.